Hello everybody, this is the orbits review. We're going to do some calculations to figure out the orbits and some parameters of orbits for different objects as they move around big massive things like planets. Let's start with reminding you about each of these equations. Remember that V is for velocity of the object, or maybe I should say the speed of the object since it's moving in a circular path. G is the universal gravitational constant. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. The capital M is the mass of the big objects like the planet and R is the orbital radius from the actual central part. So remember that that is going to be the center of the planet out to say the satellite, the orbital radius, not to be confused with something like an altitude, but we'll get that into the problems. I have a different video that talks about Kepler's laws. Remember, the first law does tell us that objects orbit in elliptical paths, and the big central object is located at one of the foci. For these calculations, though, we assume that these objects are actually moving in circular paths. And from there, I can pretty simply say that the object is located, the big object, like the planet, is located at the center of the orbit. So I'm going to start by drawing a little planet here and we're going to have the center of this planet. I'm going to give us the radius of this planet. R uh, for the planet is going to be equal to, let's just make up a number and say 8 times 10 to the 6 meters. I'm going to have some object that's out in orbit. It's moving out here. Perhaps it's just some sort of little satellite or something like that. And we're going to say that it actually has an altitude out here that is going to be, um, I don't know, a rather large number. Let's go with something like 4 times 10 to the 7 meters. So I'm actually saying that we have 40 million meters of altitude for that particular thing. And we're going to need a mass of this planet to be able to talk about this. And so I'm going to use something that's perhaps just a little bit larger than Earth. I'll use 1.2 times 10 to the uh, 25 kilograms. Let's begin by calculating the velocity or the speed of the satellite as it moves around. So recognize that I'll be using this first equation here and I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my information. So I'm going to say that the velocity is equal to the square root of, then I need my constant 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. Now we need the mass of the big object, the mass of the planet. 1.2 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. All of that is in a numerator and we have in a denominator the radius, the orbital radius. Now carefully look at what information I've provided. I provided the radius of the planet and I provided the altitude. So recall that the altitude is actually from the surface of the planet out to the location that we're interested in. The orbital radius requires that you go from the center of this circle, so this is our orbit, out to the location there. So I need to add together my radius of the planet and my altitude in order to get the orbital radius. So maybe I'll just do that real quick over here that the orbital radius is going to be equal to 8e6 meters plus 4e7 plus 4e7 and this is in meters. That leads me to find that the orbital radius is actually 4.8 E7, so 48 million meters. That's the number that I want to use for my equation here. Again, just reinforcing this big time, the R inside of there needs to be the orbital radius. So we're going to say 4.8 times 10 to the 7 meters. Make sure that you're plugging this in correctly into your calculator. 
recalling that any scientific notation in a denominator can sometimes give people some problems. When I plug these numbers in, I find that the answer, the final answer, is equal to uh, a velocity of 4,000, essentially 80 meters per second. I rounded that down just a smidge. It's pretty fast. Objects that are in orbit can travel very fast. There's no air resistance holding them back. Let's look at another problem where we use the other equation, the one that has the orbital period. That's the capital T. Here's my planet. I'm going to say that the mass of this particular planet will go, oh, will go a good, say, 10 times bigger than Earth. So I'm going to say 6 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. So that's just given information that I'm going to provide for us. And we're going to say that we have a satellite or some object, an asteroid, doesn't really matter what it is, that's out here orbiting. I'm going to say that this object is in an orbit so that it actually takes 36 hours for it to go in one full complete loop around the planet while it's in its orbit. In this particular calculation, what I want to do is I want to solve for the orbital radius. I want to know how far away it is. And then perhaps as a part B after that, we will come up with the altitude of the particular object. So if I'm planning on doing that in advance, I better give us this, this radius of the planet here, which I'm going to just say, uh, again, I'm making up a number. I'm going to say this is 9 times 10 to the 6 meters. Let's go ahead and do what we need to do involving the second equation here. We want to solve for the orbital radius to begin with. We're going to have to do some algebra to get that thing out from under the radical over there. Also, remember that units are very important in these types of equations. Embedded within the universal gravitational constant inside of that Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Because the time part of that Newton is measured in seconds, that means that the orbital period has to be measured in seconds. So the first thing I should really do is I should go over and say, it's fine and dandy to look at the orbital period in hours. However, I need to know what it is in seconds. So I'm going to take 36 hours multiplied by 3,600 seconds per hour, and I'm going to find that this orbital period is better stated for our purposes as uh, 129,600 seconds. That's my t. That's going to be equal to 2 pi multiplied by root r cubed. That's the thing I really want. g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared and then I have the mass of the planet 6 times 10 to the 25 6 times 10 to the 25 kilograms my preferred way to do this algebra is first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide over the 2 pi so it's gonna go to the denominator of the left side and then I'm gonna square both sides to get rid of the radical and I'm gonna do that all in one step so I'm going to have 129600 zero, zero, divided by 2 pi squared is equal to r cubed over g. I'm just going to write g this time instead of writing out the full number uh, times 6 times 10 to the 25. This is a spot where people have a lot of calculator problems. So I'm going to give you this intermediate here. I get 4.25 times 10 to the 8. Make sure that you are getting that same intermediate, otherwise you are probably typing that number into your calculator incorrectly. So that is the left hand side of the equation. Now I need to multiply the g up into the numerator on that side and then the mass of the planet also up into the numerator on that side. So this is going to lead to this number that we just found times g. Then I'm also going to need to multiply it by the mass of the planet. And I now have 1.7 times 10 to the 24 is equal to r cubed. So now I just need to cube root both sides. My preferred way to do that is to raise that, 
that entire quantity uh, to the one-third power, making sure the one-third is in parentheses. So I get that the R is equal to 1.19 times 10 to the 8 meters. That seems reasonable to me. From there, if I really want to know the altitude, we said that maybe we would do this as a part B. The altitude is going to be equal to the orbital radius minus the radius of the planet. So I'm going to have 1.19 times 10 to the 8 meters minus the radius of the planet was 9 times 10 to the 6 meters. This is not going to change my answer dramatically, but what it's going to do is it's going to get rid of that 9 there. That's going to go away. And I'm going to find that the altitude is equal to 1.10 times 10 to the 8 meters. For our last problem, let's do another little base case type problem here. And in this particular situation, I want to use this equation. We're going to have a situation where we have a satellite that normally is hanging out at this particular altitude. And I am actually labeling this altitude as here's the radius of the Earth moving out. And then I'm saying that the altitude of this particular satellite is two Earth radii, meaning that the orbital radius of this particular thing is three Earth radii. And that's the object, or that's the parameter that actually goes into the equation, recall? So in this base case problem, what we're going to do is we're going to say that for some reason NASA decides that they need to have this satellite moving around at twice its current altitude. So if that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two more Earth radii onto this thing. So now the overall orbital radius is going to be 5, whereas it was 3 before. And we're going to stick with the base case the way that we've done this in the past. Recalling that the way that we've done base case in the past is we've said, let's leave alone any of the parameters that cannot actually change. So we're not going to do the 2, the pi, or the g. And we're going to just plug in a 1 for any parameter that can change in this. So I have a 1 raised to the power of 3 for the orbital radius and then I have a 1 for the mass. That's my base case. So here's my base case orbital period. And I guess I need to give that to us as well. Let's say that it takes 24 hours. That's the base case number that I had not provided before. So if I'm going from 3 up to 5 I'm changing my base case by a factor of 1.6 repeated. I'm getting that by the 5 Earth radii divided by the 3 Earth radii originally. Those are canceling out. This is going to be 1.6 repeated. That's what it's changing by. My mass is not changing. So my new orbital period would look something like this. It would have a 1.6 repeated that still gets cubed because that math needs to stay in there. But the mass of the planet's not changing, so I just have a 1. So well, all I need to do here is I need to take 1.6 repeated, and I need to cube it, and then I need to square root it. And when I do this, I find that my value is 2.15. Now that's the factor that my orbital period is going to change by. So if I take this number and I multiply it by 24 hours, my original orbital period, I'm going to find that my new orbital period is going to be equal to 51.6 hours. That's all we need to know. Hopefully that was helpful for you to remember how to do some of this orbit business. And again, I'll remind you to watch the Kepler's Law video again if you need a refresher on that. As usual, if you think you got it, let your computer know.